So in this lesson, we're going to continue with some more built-in directives, and we're going to start off with ng class. So ng class in Angular, you're going to be using to dynamically set CSS classes on HTML elements, and it can be used as an attribute or as a class, and you're going to see this in a second. So what I've set up here is very simple. We just have two very simple CSS styles. They're not going to change, so you can see that one makes it orange, one makes it italic, and I'm just going to collapse it since we don't need to look at that anymore. So inside our SAM controller, we have an H1, which is unstyled right now. It just says hello there, and you can see it there. So what we're going to do is we want to introduce classes the normal way first. So we're just going to go orange and italic. You can see that that worked. So how does ng-class come into play? Well, good question. Let's start off by setting up how ng-class is going to be used, and we're just going to use one style for now. It's going to be orange. So this works, but you're probably going, hold on, what the heck just happened there? So ng class is accepting a string argument as to what the CSS class it wants to be. So here we're passing ng class a string that says, I need the orange class here. It's going to set the orange class as a regular CSS class on the HTML element and everything will just work. It's also worth noting here that you don't have to pass it statically as I did here. So we could just as easily say, scope dot class var equals orange and then in here we could just say class var refresh we can see it still works awesome so this is doing the same thing except we're not passing the string statically additionally it's possible to set these up in an array so here we can just keep the class var and we can also go yeah but i also want italic to refresh it's going to add italics this is how you are setting the class with using ng class by the string name of the class. But what if we just want to toggle the class? Well, that's an entirely different syntax. So we're going to get rid of this. The way you're going to be setting up a toggled class is quite different. So we're going to say orange. And we're going to say true. And let's get rid of this. So what we've done here is it's seeing the curly braces and it's saying, okay, list out all the CSS class names that you want me to toggle and then whether or not they should be true. So here we're going to see only orange. Refresh. Okay, we do. And if we can set that to false, that's removed as well. So in the same way, if we want to say, do this using a variable, you can see here, this will work. And we can also add in multiple at the same time. So we can say italic, set it up the same variable, if you refresh, it's all italic. So this is how you're gonna be using ng class. It's pretty straightforward and it's gonna be used a lot if you've got a pretty flashy application. So that's pretty much how you're gonna be using ng class. So I'm just going to get rid of this. Let's move on to another set of directives which are pretty interrelated, which are ng template and ng include. So these are going to be used when you're setting up the structure of your pages. And speaking very generically, I'm going to set up a template in line here. Script type equals text ng template. Inside here, I'm just going to say h1. Okay, so what did we just do here? When you are building out Angular, you're going to be creating a lot of partial HTML files because obviously you don't want to have everything in the same page. It gets incredibly messy. And as we said before, you want it to be very modular. So what you're going to be doing is you're going to be creating templates and then adding them to what's called the template cache in Angular. And we'll talk more about this later, but basically all your templates have to be registered in Angular and then Angular can go, okay, you need this template. Let me go check against my template cache. The templates are keyed in the template cache by a string. Here, we're going to say id equals test.html. And then this h1 template, this entire thing is a template, is going to be keyed by test.html. Now, we don't have to put .html in there. HTML convention is completely meaningless in the sense it's more of a convention just so you know what something is in general. So you could say just test. I prefer test.html because that's more of how I think about templates. The next question is, well, how do we use this? Well, you're going to use it in a lot of places. So in routing, which we're going to talk about later, you're going to be using templates when you're building directives, which we're going to talk about later. 
but also one of the simplest ways you can use a template is using the ng include directive, which is very, very simple. So all it is, and that's all you need. ng include is going to be passed, again, similar to ng class, is going to be passed a string variable that's going to represent the ID of the template. The template cache is going to return the actual template and it's going to be inserted into here. So if we refresh, we should see my template. So this is working great. And if we examine the source, we can see that the ng-include test.html is putting the template inside there, as we would expect. One thing to mention here, although this is working fine, it probably makes sense that you're not going to be explicitly declaring all your templates in the same HTML file. That would get horribly cluttered, not a good practice, obviously not recommended. But the ng template is going to be used in some cases when you're delivering files initially to the browser. And you don't have to worry about that right now, but ng include you're going to be using relatively frequently, ng template not so much, but it kind of gives you an idea of how Angular is breaking these templates out in the actual application framework and how it's being delivered. So this has just been a broad overview of ng class, ng include, and ng template, which are some broader directives that you're probably going to be seeing a fair amount. And it's good to sort of use these to build up in your head how you sort of have a feeling of how Angular is working.